In this video, I'm gonna teach you four ways to get over the dreaded imposter syndrome. Now this is a huge problem for a lot of people and a lot of coaches. That's why it has a name and there's actually a bunch of other names for it. I think it was an imposter disease or imposter itis or imposter or something like that. So scientists have actually studied this. Now one of the problems though is that pretty much everybody attacks this issue and other issues like it intellectually. And it's not an intellectual problem. So you're never gonna find an intellectual solution to an embodied problem. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down, dissect it, and teach you four different ways that you can attack this and dissolve it. I publish videos on this channel every single week, so make sure you are subscribed, click the little bell icon so you get all the notifications every time we go live or put up another video. If you don't know me, my name is Sean Smith. I've been teaching, coaching, training this industry for a long, long time. I'm the founder of Elite Coaching University where we teach you the skills to be a better coach and the strategies to build a bigger business. And I've coached so many people through this imposter syndrome from a life coaching perspective and from somebody who's trying to build a coaching business. So let's dive in. First of all, if this resonates with you, you're not alone. Almost everybody has thoughts of insecurity. What if they find out, oh my goodness, I feel like a fraud. That's totally natural, especially people that give a damn about helping other people, people that are driven by service will almost always have this kind of a thought. So if you have these thoughts in your brain, it just means that your brain is actually operating normally. Don't think that the first thing you have to do before you become successful is to clear all of your doubts and all these insecure thoughts, otherwise you'll never get started. But the good news is, it's all made up by you. So it can all be unmade up by you. So let's dive into the four ways to attack and dissolve imposter syndrome. Number one, let's challenge the meaning of the word itself. If you look up the definition of imposter, what it is is a person who pretends to be someone else in order to deceive others, especially for fraudulent gain. The synonyms are impersonator, deceiver, hoaxer, fraudster, trickster, so are you really an imposter? Of course not, unless you're intentionally positioning yourself in a way that you really truly aren't living, like renting mansions to film videos and then going back home and living with your parents. Some people do that, by the way. To intentionally deceive people? No, you're not doing that, so you're not actually an imposter. And since you're not an imposter, never ever again Allow your lips to say those words because they are factually untrue and each time you say them, you're making an attack on yourself that isn't fair and it's false. And sometimes the very first thing we have to do to change a pattern is to be rigid with our language. So if you're willing to take a stand against your own disempowering language, then I want you to grab something meaningful to you like a Sharpie pen, put your left hand over this thing, raise your right hand and say, I, your name, will never again call myself an imposter. Oh, this probably calls for the gavel. Never again will you be deemed an imposter. The dead succulent is important to me. This chair is important to me. This is all I need is this chair. I don't need anything else except this lamp. Bonus if you can tell me what movie that was from. I do really good impressions. Now, number two is comparison. See, we have to understand what our brain is actually doing to form the judgments of us being fraudulent. And what our brain is doing is it's comparing our current reality to something better. Now that something better could be another person who actually is living a better existence than we are, or it could be an idea that we once had. 
maybe it was five years ago that by now we would be at this particular status in our life or business or we would already be married or we would have kids or whatever the circumstances are that you had expected to create. So as long as you're comparing your current reality to something better, you're going to produce disempowering judgments. And what a lot of people do in this industry is they compare themselves to other coaches, other speakers, other trainers. So compared to them, it might feel like you're fraudulent because you can't measure up. So the way around this is not to try to convince yourself that you do measure up to them, change what you're comparing yourself to. Instead of comparing yourself to other colleagues of yours, compare yourself to the people that you're here to serve. As long as you have information that will help them improve their lives, then you have permission to support them. And this idea of you being an imposter when you're showing up to serve somebody is ridiculous. So instead of wrestling with the judgments in our head, how about we remove the ingredient that's producing the judgments? Now, if you're a coach and you're interested in identifying and clarifying your target client or who I call your seeker so that you never again have to worry about comparing yourself to all these other people and you just lock on to serving this one person, go to coachshawnsmith.com forward slash seeker training or I'll link to that in the description as well. Now the third way to attack this is actually somewhat of a subset of number two. It's over exaggerating other people's lives. What we tend to do is think that everybody else's lives are fantastic and we're the only ones that are struggling. We're the only ones that have failure in our background. We're the only ones that are imperfect. And the more that we elevate other people's circumstances, the more separation we create between ourselves and them, which produces these imposter judgments. Now this might sound really mean, but I've actually come to adopt this belief that everybody is a hot mess. Every single one of us is a hot mess. So anytime that I notice myself focusing on somebody else's life and just going, oh, I wish I could be them, I remind myself there's something about them that I don't currently know that would immediately make me very grateful that I'm not them. And sometimes it's ridiculous. Like, you know, they probably have the worst toe jam ever known to man. Or maybe they've got like 14 toes, which is producing the awful toe jam. Whatever it is doesn't matter. It helps me break this cycle of over-exaggerating everybody else's brilliance while simultaneously under-exaggerating my brilliance. Now, if we really wanna get deep, this is generally a function of us not being happy with the effort that we're giving, which is why we tend to exaggerate the efforts that we see or the results that we see from other people. So the solution is to really dive in deeper with yourself, clear up whatever shame you might have around what you're not creating in your life which is giving you the time to look at what everybody else is creating. And finally, number four, if you really want to get rid of this imposter syndrome cycle, you've got to address your fear of visibility. So what I mean by that is we all have some kind of visibility fears. I mean, being visible is the only way that we can get hurt. People are only going to be able to judge us if they can see us. So one of the ways that our unconscious mind tries to protect ourselves is to stay in the shadows. If they can't see me, they can't hurt me. That's where it gets hella real. If this is really landing for any of you, please comment below because this is the actual issue in your body that almost nobody can handle intellectually. Now I say it lives in our body because once upon a time in our past, we were seen whether we got up in front of the class in sixth grade or we tried to score a goal or make a basket or some other way we tried to physically perform and we failed. Or for people that have a lot of instability in their background, if there was a lot of turbulence in your home growing up, a lot of yelling, screaming, maybe abuse on some level, then as a way to protect yourself physically, you probably decided that the safest Thing to do is make sure nobody sees me because if they don't see me they can't yell at me or they can't hit me. 
But whatever way it shows up in your body, whether it's a bunch of deep trauma or just normal stuff that we all go through as humans, we all have this resistance towards being seen in our bodies. And then in order to protect ourselves from all forms of negative experiences, we create what I call a border patrol. And the border patrol's job is to keep us in the middle of our comfort zone where it's safe. What that means is anytime that we try to expand, we try to chase our goals, we try to actually go after our dreams, the border patrol is there to meet us and do everything that it possibly can to keep us safe, which means stop trying. And the ammunition that the border patrol has on us is really all of our experiences, our thoughts, our doubts, our feelings, and this imposter syndrome was made up by the border patrol as a way to scare you into staying safe. And since nobody who gives a damn about other people wants to be seen as a fraud, your border patrol knows it will usually work. So whenever they resort to this imposter syndrome and tell you, you're gonna be found out, they're gonna see who you really are, you're such a fraud, you're such a fake, don't do it. Just understand you are scaring them because you're actually taking action on your goals. The only time the border patrol will use these really dangerous tactics is when you're threatening to break through your comfort zone. So number one, recognize this as a sign that you're going in the right direction. And then number two, if you're really truly committed to creating the body that you need that has the capacity to achieve all the goals and dreams that you want to achieve while you're here, then do some embodiment work. One of the things we offer is what I call confidence coaching. Now, a lot of people think that we need to increase our confidence. Confidence is not actually something that needs to be increased. Confidence is something that just needs to be uncovered. We all have a high level of confidence, but throughout the course of our life, we cover it up with all of these negative experiences and layers and limiting beliefs. And with neurotransformational coaching, we can uncover those layers and give you access to the confidence that you already have rather than thinking that confidence is something that you need to or is even possible to increase. So if you're interested in actually shifting the embodiment of your protection and give yourself the body that doesn't need to create any crazy ideas like imposter syndrome to protect itself, then go to coachshawnsmith.com forward slash confidence coaching We'll get you set up with a free experience of this neurotransformational work. And I'll also put a link to it in the description below. So I hope this video has been valuable for you. If you've been wrestling with this imposter syndrome on any level, please drop a comment below and let me know the specifics of the thoughts that have been really grabbing you and challenging you. And either myself or my team will respond to you and help you however we can. And if you like this video, let me know by liking, subscribing, commenting, share it with your tribe if you think it'll be valuable, and I'll see you again in another video soon. Yes, some people do that, Suzanne. Oh, the stuff that happens in this industry. Flat out liars, some of them. Ugh. Not everyone, not most of them, but some of the stuff that some people do, Atrocious. It's actually sad. All right, I'm done. I gotta go. I gotta pee.